John, I assume you all have been doing the scouting report for UCLA. I'm curious, did you get a heads up that this might be happening and your reaction to playing North Carolina now? Um, they had talked about it um, that morning, uh, yesterday morning. I think it may have hit something yesterday night or the night before, but it was late. So uh, all I said was we need to have it by noon because I, I, you got to, we're doing all this stuff and now we got to totally change. And that means we got to watch tape. And I don't want to start watching tape until you tell me it's done and that every coach has agreed to do it. I said we would. It doesn't bother me. Uh, but, you know, but we're all in the same boat. There's no, you know, UCLA probably was preparing for us and now they're preparing for Ohio State and same vice versa. I mean, North Carolina wasn't preparing for us. They were preparing for Ohio State. So, um, you know, we're all in the same boat. And, uh, um, you know, it's a, it, either game was going to be hard. I mean, UCLA is a terrific team. They play tough. And so is North Carolina, um, both of them you know, top 20 teams that, uh, um, you know, either one, it didn't matter. It was going to be a hard game. Kyle Tucker will go with you next. John Hale will come to you after that. Now, with, with a team like this, you know, that's hit some of these early struggles, how much more are you able to get done, not only with a week between games, but also, you know, being in the Camp Cal period uh, out of school and, and being able to go multiple times a day? And where have you seen the most progress so far from your guys? Um, you know, the, the thing that hopefully they understand is that you're trying to play efficient offensively. You can't have 25 turnovers and win a college basketball game. Um, defensively, you got to fight. This game that now with Carolina, they're out rebounding their opponents by 18 rebounds a game, and they played a good schedule. Texas and Stanford and Iowa and, you know, UNLV, the, the teams that they played, um, they're out rebounding them by 18. And it's literally, you know, that you, you're, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to go body to body. Guards are going to have to stick their nose in. Our guards are going to have to get, 15 rebounds, 10 rebounds. They have to, and to give yourselves a chance. And, um, you know, uh, yeah, we've gotten better. You know, we haven't been able to scrimmage the last couple of days. We've had some guys uh, out with some stuff. So, um, but the guys that were there got better. And um, the, the, the issue becomes, you know, feeling the success that goes along with your getting better. And that's what's been hard and, and hard because of veteran teams. And, um, you know, we uh, we got to have a breakthrough at some point. John Hill, go ahead. Jerry Sisson will come to you after that. Cal, just to clarify there, you said some guys out with some stuff. Anybody you think will be missing for the game? Well, I hope not, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, we need guys to practice today. we got to scrimmage some today. You know, we've got a lot done, but, you know, we got to go up and down a little bit to get the flow of the game a little bit. Um, you know, and, and, and Carolina it, it kind of plays that whether you make it or miss, they're flying it up your back. And so you got to get used to some of that kind of stuff. And it's hard on a quick turn, but, you know, it's hard for all of us. Jerry Sipson, you've got next. Ken Spencer, good afternoon. Yeah, John, I, I was hoping you could uh, uh, hash out the uh, point guard situation right now with Devin, Davion, and Terrence. How do you see that playing out immediately? You know, how should we tell readers what to look for at the point guard spot? Well, we're, we're playing Terrence there. Um, Devin is um, the backup that way, but I like Devin and, and Davion and Terrence in together because I've done it before where you're playing three point guards at one time. And um, I like having the ball in Terrence's hands. And, and like I said, we're going to see, this is one of those games where, you know, they're hard showing on pick and rolls. They'll trap you some, they'll, um, you know, deny, they'll make it hard to catch. Um, are you, are you fighting to get open as hard as they're fighting to catch you, to get you from catching it? Um, but that's that's where this thing is kind of flowing. Biggest thing is what unit did we put on there and how did that unit play together and were we efficient offensively and did we fight on defense? This game's going to have the added 
okay, you can fight the whole possession, but you better rebound. And that means five guys, you better gang rebound because they do. John, each year it seems like there's always a, a, a process of determining who are play starters and who are play finishers on your team. How has that process gone with, with so many new pieces? And is that still very much a work in progress? It's, it's a work in progress, but it's, it's, we're narrowing in a little bit. And, and what I don't want it to do is change game to game. I want to go with it, you know, and, and we played enough games to give us an idea. And the second piece of it is we had to tell some guys, you're not going to shoot threes, none. And I said, most college teams, they have two, maybe three. There are a couple that have four or five that are, you know, but they're giving up something, either athleticism, they're giving up something, toughness, you know, defensively, something's given up if you have four or five three-point shooters. Normal a team will have two, maybe a third that can shoot some, but those two shoot the most. You know, we had like eight guys that thought it was okay to shoot threes, and no, it isn't okay. And the other thing is we got to look for baskets, not just threes. If that ball goes into the paint or a drive into the paint and it's kicked out, let it go. But as the ball is swinging, as we're running offense, a two's as good as a three. You know, you make a couple twos, that's, that's okay too now. So we just got to get them accepting the roles they have, getting them to focus on game planning. I mean, we're just sh sloppy, uh, execution sloppy, um, game plan, you know, I told him today, my, my thing that I said to him, you don't think any less of yourself. You just think of yourself less. You still have confidence in how hard you worked and all those things. You're just not in the game just thinking of yourself. You should be thinking of the team and your teammates. Don't think any less of yourself. Just think less of yourself, you know, and I, I try to get them to, we, we got to think in a unison right now. And how do we get it? And, and again, let me, let me go back. And we're all in the same boat here, but they had, they would have been at my house 20 times already in between practices for dinners, some film. We're together. We've been there twice, twice. Um, we will have dinners together. We will have had functions on, they would be in, in each other's rooms. They would be playing videos. They would be in the locker room. None of that's happening. We have 10 new players that don't know each other. And it's hard when they're only together for two and a half hours on the court. And so we're doing some things that, you know, hopefully we stay safe. But I'm trying to say we've got to get to know one another, trust one another, as much off the court as on. And so, but it's, you know, like I said, it's, you want to see where we are. You want to see that, did you learn from the Notre Dame second half of what you're capable of doing? Um, and then don't think any less of yourself. Just think of yourself less. Think of the team more. Aaron Burr, go to you. John Long, after him. Hey, Cal. Um, you talk a lot about playing with a sense of urgency. Where is the fine line between playing that way and not playing too fast, not trying to do too much when you're out there on the court? Well, again, efficiency, execution, having a flow to the game. We try to get it right away. We try to post it right away. We try to shoot it right away. It's not there. It goes to the other side. There's 20 seconds left on the clock. What's the flow of the game now? What are we doing? Uh, there's seven, eight seconds left and you got the ball. What's the flow of the game say we do now? I mean, we're trying to teach all that and trust each other. Um, execution still not there, not great screening, not great spacing, um, opportunities to drive, all those things we've been working on. Um, but I will say, and I, I say this to you, the 18 or 20 things we need to improve on, we can't try to work on 18, 20 things. Let, let's do these four or five things and let's get better at these four or five. John Long, we'll go to you, then Adam Jabori after that. 
Hey, John, I, for one, was looking forward to seeing you guys play UCLA. I wanted to see how Johnny would would respond. And, you know, you talk about guys like Johnny Juzang and, and Jamal Baker and Michael Mulder. I know you want to see those guys do real well afterwards. But uh, in hindsight, looking back, is there anything that you think you could have done with them that would have made them a little bit more productive during the time they were here at Kentucky? Um. Well, the guys they were playing behind, you know, it's like I could have said they're going to take 20 of your minutes. How would you feel about that? That's the hard thing about this. Emmanuel quickly said it last night the best. Emmanuel quickly stuck it out and said, what I learned there and where my confidence comes from is coach made us fight for everything. And either I took it or someone else took it. And that's what makes this what it is here. And, um, you know, I wish Johnny well. You know, we did everything that we could to help him play right away, knowing that we were going to play him. And now that we don't get to play him, I still hope he does well. Adam, we'll go with you, then John and Jerry. I'll come back to you for two follow-ups, and that's probably all the time we got, guys. Yeah, hi, Coach. Good morning. Uh, you mentioned Emmanuel there. He and Julius and Kevin combined for 43 and 10 rebounds last night for the Knicks when they came back. You know, can they turn that team into a playoff team this year? And also, before a given draft, do you talk to all 30 NBA teams? Do they call you? Or how many teams do you speak with before a given draft to give input? Uh, more than half. Um, you know, some of them may not be looking at our kids. But usually it's more than half. And, uh, yeah, I, I hope, you know, I don't want to put that on their team or their, their staff, uh, Tibbs, and, but I like what they're doing. I like what it looks like. You know, I like their competitive spirit, um, you know, and uh, they're all, it seems like, again, they've all bought into what's going on and how they're trying to play in New York. So I'm happy for them. Happy for all three of those guys. And you brought up Michael Mulder. Happy for Michael Mulder. It's a great story. The hardest thing in college basketball is being a junior college player and then going to a high major, major school, because normally it takes you time to get adjustments. But here's again, Michael Mulder toughed it out, fought like heck. Wish he would have done more. I wanted him to do more. He wanted to do, but he had a good career here. And now sticking it out, fighting it, he's on a roster. From what I understand, did, he, did they keep him on the roster, Eric? Still on the roster. I couldn't be more happy for him. All right, John, we'll come back to you and then Jerry, and then we'll get down to John. Cal, when you all took the bus to Atlanta, was that a decision based on the, the travel budget cuts in the department, or was that a trying to reduce COVID? And, and what effect does that have on it the was, team? It was two things. First of all, I thought, let, you know, at that time when we made the decision, I thought it would be safer for COVID. Uh, no, it wasn't anybody saying, hey, we're doing this. I like the fact that we were saving the department money, but it, it was more based on safety. And you ready? I thought it was a four hour bus ride. I did. And when they told me it was six hours, I go, what are you talking about? We're going to Atlanta. They said, it's six hours. It's six. And I only learned that about four or five days before the, the bus ride. And you know what? I'm not putting it on. We, we, it was 12 hours in a short period of time we were on a bus. I'm telling you, I was on a bus that long one time in my life. And that was when I was in college, drive, took a bus to the Poconos to work the five-star basketball camp. And I, other than, well, maybe at Wilmington, we, we went to Asheville one time. And uh, we drove a bus. And it was a... Uh, Oof. It's a bad bus too, but you know, so that that's on me. It was my mistake, but I thought it was four hours away. Then I, that's how much I'm, I'm driving around. I'm kind of like the guy that doesn't know how much milk costs or, you know, even though I do, I'm a Kroger more than you uh, couldn't believe. To no bus to Cleveland. No, we're flying to Cleveland. All right, Jerry, go ahead. Last one. Yeah, John, I wanted to ask you about Keontae Johnson at Florida collapsing. He had had COVID. And I'm wondering how that plays on your mind. Is it a sobering thing? Is it, does it put basketball in a different perspective? 
Well, no one's telling us. We know he had COVID, but you know, I, I would, I would hope if there was something related to COVID, they let us all know, um, because I have a couple kids that had it earlier. Um, but the second thing is, I lived it. I lived it with Marcus Camby. Um, in 1995, we were at St. Bonaventure and Dante came in, Dante Bright came running in the locker room prior to the game and said, coach, uh, Marcus fell out, Marcus fell out. And I went out and he was unconscious in the hallway, breathing, but totally knocked out unconscious. Um, I took him to the hospital. I didn't coach the game. I went to the hospital with him and stayed and stayed overnight. Uh, Bruiser stayed with me. Um, when we got back, he went to another hospital and, and they never found out what it was. They never had an idea what it was. They say 70% of those kind of things, you never know why it happened. The rest of the season, I was really conscious of him, especially when he first came back. If he went down and grabbed his knees, I'm, my stomach was in my throat, uh, but he ended up being, it was, it was not, you know, it was something obviously, but it was, and he played the rest of the year and he had a terrific 17 years in the NBA. And so let's hope that it's the same, but if it has something to do with COVID, we, I, I would say every coach in the country would like to know if that, if it did.